you know, right. same shit, different day, man. Just, just, just trying to make shit happen. That's it. Yeah, man. That's right. Well, tonight we are learning there was no security on site at the White Ridge Community Center on Sunday when gunmen opened fire. Oh, no security, man. Um, you can't have an event with no security with sons. Heads are going to roll. <laughs> Heads are going to roll. And, and the police department might be in trouble, too. They were like, well, you knew sons were gathering. Why weren't you over there? Over there to get heckled and, and called and called white supremacy. Why didn't you go over there to the sun gathering and get called a racist for hours and, 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 and attacked verbally for hours by Nimrods? Shooting seven people, killing two of them. That is the word from a member of the Whitewood Community Association. WEAR's Karis Harmon spoke with that person just minutes ago. And Karis, she says they do have the sheriff's office patrolling every hour when events are going on. Yeah, so she also told me unless the event has 100 people or more, security is not required. Some other members of the community that have hired security for future events are asking what... You, know, you, you have to change that rule, man. That rule was made with gliders in mind. <laughs> you know, if, the, if, if the function has 20, 10 or more sons, you need to have security. But I'll even give you 20. Shit, five 20. or more. <laughs> I mean, a hundred. No, five more. Wow. These people don't know sons, man. They're going on. Yeah, so she also told me unless the event has 100 people or more, security is not required. Some other members of the community that have hired security for future events are asking what else can be done to prevent this from happening at other places. The question we've been asking following a deadly mass shooting at the Wedgwood Community Center has been answered. Tuesday afternoon, I spoke with Deborah Lawrence with the Community Association. Over the phone, she tells me there was no security at the center for Sunday's basketball games. She tells me security and insurance is not mandatory for renters who use the space unless the event has 100 people or more. Lawrence. Yeah. Sons. Who used the space unless the event has 100 people or more. Lawrence adds she had no knowledge of a dice game that was happening nearby. I also reached out to... A oh, so there was a dice game happening nearby, man. Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah, if there's a dice game going on with Sons, man, you got money and... Oh, uh, man. Dice games. I did a video a few years ago on dice games, man. So many dice games, brothers get killed in dice games, man. Um, it's kind of nice. like, you know, yeah, it's, it's kind of like when you had to tell them, when the sun man tells you to leave, um, when, when you tell the sun man to leave and he come, they always come back and shoot, it's kind of like that. A dice game, violence. Has 100 people or more. Lawrence adds she had no knowledge of a dice game that was happening nearby. I also reached out to Escambia County to ask about the security protocols, but no one was able to speak on camera. My security questions were not addressed, but the county released a statement saying it is working with the HOA and the sheriff's office to evaluate potential safety enhancements, including additional security cameras and lighting. Today, I spoke with Barbara Anita Hale. She's the president of the Inglewood Redevelopment Center. She's excited for the Shantytown community's six-year reunion coming up on August 31st. It'll be held at the Inglewood Center. We want everybody to come and just be a part because it's a good thing. I spoke with Hale following a press conference held at the Wedgwood Community Center, where community members oh, and look like my for change following Sunday's deadly shooting. That's that TD Jakes, that TD Jakes right there. Man. The hell, um, that did TD Jakes, man. Um, activists called for change following Sunday's deadly shooting. That's why I came here and not to support them and what they're talking about that happened, the shooting, everything over in Wedgwood, but also to find out what other measures that we need for our community so something like this will not happen. As a uh, You need uh, probably cops like everywhere teaming with cops. And then you need like no alcohol, no drinks, and something still could happen.
but that'll lessen it, man. Um, but as long as you got sons there, man, this can happen, man. Sons do these things over the the most minute. Um, I guess slights or perceived disrespects. They'll shoot up a bunch of people. They'll shoot. They'll kill two other people who had nothing to do with it, and shoot seven other people over a perceived slight. And they don't give a fuck. Shantytown celebration approaches. Hale says she's gotten all of her ducks in a row saying they have already obtained security, plus have gotten insurance for the grounds. She says that is required by the county. She says as an extra safety measure, she's given paperwork to the police department and sheriff's office, so law enforcement is aware of the event, hoping they'll be able to patrol. It's sad that we have to have the police policing us, and this is our, our community, you know, because we should be policing ourselves. We know what we're going to do. Yeah, man. Well said. Um, well said. It's sad that y'all got the police because I'm telling you, man, it could have been a thousand white people there. Half of them could have been armed. And you wouldn't have needed no goddamn police. You wouldn't have needed one police officer. Let alone a woman or something like that. These, listen. We commit so much more crime than everybody else it's that they have to hide it. Think about it. They have to hide our crime because we commit that much crime. They have to hide it. And they have to keep us in the news as victims so that people don't turn on us and just fucking try to wipe us out. We know how we're going to act. We know how we, we need to govern ourselves. That Her message to people who want to come? Leave the guns at home. We're going to have a good time. As far as the investigation into the shooting, the sheriff's office says they have no suspects yet. Live in the studio, Karis Harmon, WEAR News. Wow. Community leaders, activists, and crime prevention advocates all gathered at the Wedgwood Community Center this morning. A show of solidarity against gun violence in the county and a message to the rest of the community to get involved in bringing it to an end. We have to meet our generation, this generation, our community as a one. And the one person can't do it all. We have to be a village for our youth, our young people. And we have to say something. We have to say something because it can be our turn today. It can be your children tomorrow. The Wedgwood Community Center remains closed now after the shooting Sunday night. Now, if you have any information about that shooting or any recent gun violence, you could earn a reward from Crime Stoppers by giving them a call with tips at 433-STOP-850. Wow. Um, I hope she got high. A mass uh, shooting in Skibia County on Sunday like night claimed the... You hope she got sealed. <laughs> I mean... You would think that, okay, this just happened. If Granny wants to throw up a GoFundMe and have people come by for another family, she should. But Granny, listen, Granny with the red hair, man, she done seen so much stuff. Because remember, the community been like this ever since we got let off the plantation. That woman... Is probably seen so much stuff and she's still like talking about guns and shit. There's no solution, man. There's no solution for sons, man. Sons are fixed in their position in the world. A mass shooting in Escambia County on Sunday night claimed the lives of two men and injured several others. The sheriff's office tells us the youngest victim is only 11 years old. It happened at the same time a men's basketball game was happening in the Marie K. Young Center Sunday night. Sheriff Simmons says a group was playing a game of dice outside when a car that was reported as stolen showed up. And as this car pulls up, 
uh, drives by one time, comes back, uh, stops, and then three males get out and exit that car, one with a, a longer gun, assault-type rifle, and two with handguns. And then they uh, aim towards a number of people, a group of people that were in that small uh, pavilion area there playing uh, that dice game. The sheriff says there are a total of seven victims. Two of the victims, aged 21 and 24-year-old men, were killed. The other victims, 22, 23, 27, 29, and 11 years old. Their conditions are unknown. The sheriff's office obtained surveillance video showing the three shooters. Now is the time that we talk about we need help from the community. Now is the time that we say this is unnecessary violence. This is this can't happen. We need to talk to our children. We need to talk to our our our, our schools. We need to talk to our clergy. We need to talk to people and say this is unnecessary. But you know, it's also time to talk about personal responsibility. Because the people that are responsible for this are the three people that are that are in this picture right here. These three are responsible. There's one more that let, stayed in the car in the driver's seat of that white car so they can make a quick getaway. At a press conference held this morning, District 3 County Commissioner Lumen May thanked the sheriff's office for its quick response. Although we want our children to be able to go into parks, we want them to be able to go into community centers, we want them to be safe havens. Community centers are meant to be safe havens. It's for children who come from single family homes. It's from children who are plagued by violence that they expect to come on a Sunday on God's day to come into a community center to be safe. That's our responsibility to make sure they're safe. But in order to make them safe, we have to hold people accountable. And so we're calling on this community. Commissioner May says because the community center is an Escambia County facility, the county is working in tandem with the sheriff's office, closing the facility down as the investigation continues. The sheriff saying they'll be adding more technology throughout the county, like updated cameras, but they need people to speak up. Let's talk about the, the fact that there have been shootings we've had where no one knows anything about anything. No <laughs> one knows who did it. Yet somehow, oddly enough, there's retaliation. So some <laughs> Oh, man. Glad is going glad, man. Shout out to Retro Black Wolf, man. He says, I saw Florida Sheriff J Grady Judge do his pedophile roundup today. All the suspects were Caucasians and Mexicans. So my question is, is that DNA? Um, hmm. A lot of sons do that, man. Whatever you, whatever your deviancy and degeneracy, whatever you're talking about, um, Retro Black Wolf sons do that probably more than anybody. Whatever you're talking about, we do it more than anybody. But we should be able to have, we do get to take advantage of ice and freezers and microwave. We get to take advantage of everything that the country has to offer, man. Um, but we do everything in spades that everybody does is degenerate. So if, if there was a roundup in this county, Judge Grady Judge's county, with the, and most of the suspects were Hispanic and white, um, I'm sure that uh, that may have been just that roundup or that um, sting they did on that group. I'm sure that they'll do another one and all the suspects will be black. Because to try to blame sexual de degeneracy and debauchery on other races and say that it's in their DNA, when we do that shit more, they just hide it. So I, I think that, yeah, it's definitely DNA, man. Definitely DNA. But the inability to control those urges, the inability to, you know, uh, create systems and institutions that protect children um from 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 adults just the institution in this does it on autopilot uh to be able to uh work with um authorities and cops to bring people who touch children to justice the black community don't even got that if you're an uncle and you molesting um a kid in the family or you a cousin you molesting a kid in the family Depending on who you are, man, people might not say anything if they know. So um, I've been around sons all my life. Whatever you're saying that they've, that Sting Grady Judge had, 
um, I'm sure we could go to another town the same day and find a, a sting where they arrested a, b- a bunch of pedophiles and uh, sexual assaulters, and it was all sons, every last one of them. That's a fact. I came across an article today where the son man, he was like an original son man, though. He took his 12 year old daughter's virginity. Wow. That shit was crazy. But it was wrapped up because it had something to do with the mom, too. I was looking at, I was looking through the uh, the paperwork, the paperwork from the, uh, from where the whole the case was going or whatever. They would, uh, she, he said, he sent the mother $800. And cat in the cash app for that whole situation. It, it, it was just it was a crazy situation. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, try to get. Yeah, send it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, he killed the little girl, right? Yeah. Well, is, is this the one? Where I think the girl was very young, and the mom um sold her to the drug dealer. Is that the one you're talking about? Oh no 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 no. Uh, this something different. This just yeah, happened recently. Did. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um and the difference between that and and why 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 um I I I wanted to expound on that notion that when you see groups, when you see these bust and everybody in the drug bust is or everybody in the the the, the gun bust is, is 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 of another race besides black because what people try to do is they try to say, okay, well, if that's the case, then like the way blacks murder that, that these other groups do it like that. No, no. The only people who shoot guns in broad daylight in public places, whether it be downtown, the movie theater, the mall, schools the only people who do that shoot guns in public places are black people and sun burritos and then on burritos we got that locked down we got that crime cornered so no no matter how many times you try to convince me that other groups are doing crime too yes they are doing crime too but violent crime we got that locked down. We the goats of that in America. Salute to um you, bro. David DeHart. Just check your local sex offender registry. You'll find out about DNA. Yeah, man. I'm a nose. And they don't care to talk to us. They don't care to talk to anyone. Community advocates are holding a news conference on the recent violence tomorrow morning. The groups involved include Movement for Change and the NAACP. We'll have coverage of that event on our newscasts and online. And we're joined now by Skimmy County Sheriff Chip Simmons and District 3 County Commissioner Loman May to talk about this violence and seemingly endless violence these days. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with the sheriff. Let's talk about this. Retaliation. Uh, good afternoon, Sue. Thank you for having me. Uh, I spent all morning basically with, with the commissioner and, and quite frankly, we talk a lot about what we can do and, and what's going on in the community. Every time we have an act of violence, specifically in District 3, I get on the phone and Lumen's already on top of it. Um, we're talking about what we can do and why it's happened. So, uh, you know, to your point, there is uh, I think that there's a level of accountability that we have got to get to the bottom of it. It's, it's got to be, it's got to start with the people that commit these crimes. And then it's got to branch out from there. Uh, the people that know they're, they're, who these people are, the people that are helping to facilitate, the people that helped them before, during, or after an act like this. Uh, because it's a crime. If you help someone for, or facilitate a crime like this, certainly a homicide, you too can be charged. And uh, I just think from a community standpoint, we need to say, one, that that these are the people that are responsible. There has got to be some personal responsibility. And two, we as a community have to come together. But when we talk about these particular crimes and there had, there, we've seen the rash of them, we go back and most times when I speak with you, when I speak with Commissioner May, they seem to go back to a previous crime, a previous mm-hmm. crime, previous crime, and they're all leading back to the same thing. And it's retaliatory. If you look at social media, 
And that's what people are saying, that this is a payback for a previous shooting. That is correct. Um, we have we've had a couple of shootings over the over the year. And when we look at, at, at an incident like this and we say, OK, what what caused this? We always look for motive. And in this situation, we we're looking at a number of different things. Is this a retaliation for this shooting or for this other shooting? Uh, because we are getting information that's a retaliation. It, these the people believe that they were wronged in some way or this someone, one of their friends, one of their associates, one of their family members were shot. So it's a smaller group of, of people that are doing this but they continue to do this and they continue to retaliate. Uh, Commissioner May, we heard your uh, comment there in the story that Karis did. This happened on a Sunday, of all things. This happened at a community center. You know, was there security there? Should there have been security at the community center? What should the neighborhood expect? What should communities expect to see, to know that their children are safe, to know that they are safe when they go to these places? So, uh, uh, first of all, it's an active investigation and we're having our staff look into it. I've worked with the sheriff and talked to Sheriff Simmons all day to figure out exactly what happened. But we certainly expect for our children to go into safe havens to make sure that when they are coming to a community center, they are protected. We do have management agreements with different neighborhood associations in which they manage those. Uh, and oftentimes we have to review the protocols to make sure they're followed. And so our staff is working diligently with the sheriff's department and making sure that those protocols or will follow, and if not, uh, then we're going to have to look into what consequences that will happen. Now, granted, it's early on, you still have an investigation going, but it sounds like what we're hearing initially is that there may have been a dice game going on outside. We're talking about illegal activity, perhaps. Uh, how do we can monitor this? Like you're saying, it, it, it takes a neighborhood, it takes a community going, somebody picking up a phone and calling and saying, hey, there's some activity illegal going on out there. We initially, we're hearing an 11 year old, a child was wounded in this incident. Well, I think it's a lot. Uh, Commissioner May and I spoke earlier about there was a basketball game, but there's also a dice game that was outside. The ones that were targeted in this specific incident were the ones that were playing the dice in the, on the outside pavilion. Uh, so w w what are they doing? Who's letting them play dice and, and why are they doing it on this Sunday? Does it happen every Sunday? I, I, we weren't aware of that. And so there's a lot to unfold here. Uh, we're we're working with the um, on the active criminal investigation. That's where our, our detectives, all of our detectives are working on right now. And then as Commissioner May just talked about, they're also looking at, OK, what? Let's look at every piece of this. Let's, let's look at the number of things that could have caused this or at least contributed to it, because I, I don't I don't think that. Playing a dice game. Uh, yeah, playing a dice game when you got a bunch of sons. Yeah, you don't think that playing a dice game should start a shooting. Yeah, you don't think this should start a shooting. You don't think that should start. You don't think that should. You're not dealing with gliders. You're dealing with sons, man. Anything can cause somebody to pull out a gun and shoot in public. Anything, man. game means that you get shot. That, that, that's not right. I don't think that playing a basketball game means that, that someone's going to come and do a drive-by shooting. But we look at all these pieces to it and, and, and unfold it, unpack it, if you will, and decide, hey, maybe we can prevent this from happening again if we do this or if we do this. And we're certainly willing to do so. And what steps do you think the county will take from here? I know you said you, you're going to be having meetings and some decisions will be made. Will the Wedgwood Community Center be closed for a time while this happens? Well, the number one priority is the safety, Sue. And so we're going to close it now until we have further investigations to find out exactly what happened. Uh, several weeks ago, I got with the sheriff on Aries Boulevard in Montclair uh, to go to the Children's Trust and to the county uh, to look at implementing more cameras just for the safety of our children. And so I think we're going to make every effort uh, when we have these events to make sure the children are safe and putting the proper protocols and the proper instruments that we need to assist law enforcement to make sure that every child that comes into a community center or park is safe. You talked about personal responsibility. What's your appeal to the community out there? My appeal is that law enforcement can't do it alone. It's our community, our responsibility, and our children. Please, if you have information that can help apprehend these people that have committed a senseless crime of violence against someone's dog, against someone's son, someone's brother, someone's father, please share that information so we can bring safety back to our parks and to our community center. Sure. I, th I think that's it. I think that we, we have to hit this through too bad they dealing with sons man none of that stuff none of that stuff is gonna happen man um none of that you ain't gonna get no assistance on nothing jack you on your own man <laughs> 
try to solve this case, man. Uh, on your damn own, man. Here's Pensacola three weeks hey, ago. Uh, did you Good afternoon, prosecutor. Go ahead. What's up? My fault. Real quick, did you did you see the new developments in a Julio Fulio case? Yeah, they caught the guys and they caught the yeah, I seen that. They caught they caught another the, the shooters. They caught the actual shooters, the dudes they suspect to be the shooters, the brother. One of them. I think they caught one of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they, yeah they got one of them. Yeah, it's, and it's, that it's, that, it's, that, it's, that shorty. Yeah, that shorty that was that 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 they arrested, she was actually in in previous videos with yeah. uh with him. Like it, like that whole situation is crazy, man. They get ready to tear this shit apart. Yeah, Dre. Um, uh, yeah, definitely, man. Um, it, 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 look at this. What happened in Pensacola, where the mass shooting happened? Look what happened three weeks ago in the city. Good afternoon. Prosecutors are upgrading the charges against two suspects in a drive-by shooting. The 70-year-old woman hit by gunfire last week has died of her injuries. Her family identifies her as Myra Hayes, a lifelong resident of Pensacola. They issued a statement saying in part Myra was a very gentle, sweet person who never had a bad word to say about anyone. She loved everyone's kids. She loved sitting outside and relaxing. She never, she never met a stranger. The shooting started in the early evening of June 24th on Eris Boulevard off Massachusetts Avenue. The Scambi County Sheriff's Office says shot spotter picked up at least 40 shots fired. Deputies tracked down a car seen leaving the area and followed it to the Highway 90 bridge. They used a pit maneuver to stop the car. The suspects jumped off the bridge. One of them, Travion Moten, died from injuries sustained in the fall. Jacarius Etheridge is in the Scambia County Jail and Terrence Gross Jr. is awaiting extradition. Think about that, man. This is the this is the same city as tonight's mass shooting. The same city, just three weeks ago, seventy year old woman shot and killed in the drive by. From Laredo, Texas, prosecutors say they'll be charged with the murder of Myra Hayes. They're also being charged in Moten's death because he died during commission of a felony. <sighs> Wow. Pure or uns no, I can't say unsanity. <laughs> yeah, pure, pure insanity. <laughs> yeah, man. This is this is crazy, man. Like, what the hell? Like y'all shooting 70 year old ladies and drive-bys, and it's just like that's just another day. Like, that's just another day in y'all area. Like there's no big deal, no Sandrums, no Sonya Massey energy for that 70 year old lady that just got her fucking head blown off by some sun turns. No, 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 no right. protest for her. Nothing. Nothing. Sons are cold, man. Um Sons are cold as ice for that shit, man. Lifelong resident, lifelong Pensacola resident. Oh, we got a white dude, man. Let's see what the white dude doing, man. The Gloucester County Sheriff's Office says a grandson brutally attacked his grandmother. 23-year-old Joseph Fabula now faces several charges, including attempted murder and abduction. Ten on your sides, photojournalist Robert Rizzo uncovered the disturbing details in court documents. The incident happened on Saturday just afternoon on Yacht Club Road off Guinea Road in Gloucester. When officers arrived, they found two people injured, a man and a 78-year-old grandmother who was also his caretaker. Court documents describe in detail what led up to the arrest of 23-year-old Joseph Bradley Fabula Jr. According to the documents, both Fabula and the victim stated they had argued. It reportedly escalated when Fabula became angry enough to attempt to smother his grandmother by lying on top of her with his 6-foot-2, 300-pound body. According to the paperwork, the victim wiggled free, but Fabula began repeatedly kicking her and hitting her in the head with his closed fist. 
the complaint goes on to say that Fabula then locked the door, not allowing her to leave, and that it was in the kitchen where Joseph Fabula told the victim, I'm going to break your neck, and then I'll break your back. The victim responded, oh, God, help me. Fabula then stated, God is not going to help you. I'm going to send you to hell. The victim begged, Joey, please no. The document goes on to say they both grabbed knives. And a chase began with Fabula chasing the victim around the kitchen several times, making several attempts to slash at his grandmother. The victim then stated,